afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, a master of propaganda here of the Reich, defender of the fatherland. We're off here to an exciting one versus one on the road to Karakop between in the North Stone Killer fighting for the United States of America for the second armament going up versus in the South Dallahan fighting for the Wehrmacht Deutschland fighting here for the 22nd Panzer Division, we got here rifle, we got infantry, we got heavy cavalry versus Jaeger armor, fortified armor, and mechanized. Interesting two doctors there, rare to see them together, but that actually means dullahan has got rather a lot of elephants and command tanks and spotting scopes. There's a lot of things there's already never overlap there. We're also noting a double pioneer start there, noting also, by the way, here's an interesting little detail here actually. It's not the first pioneer that actually built in front of comedy, it's the second one, allowing the first pioneer to sort of more aggressively rush out and actually grab territory, so that's not bad there. And we got an MD42 then for length of a dollar hand, so in terms of starts, this one is a bit more interesting. This one is a bit more interesting. Not so usual Valmont player, at least at the moment, but it works actually, it works and it makes sense. Meanwhile, we got rear response, we got Ravman here for Stone Killer, heading out sort of in three different directions. That way, he's sort of going for a more sort of broad approach. That way, looking out for sort of where Dalahan is focusing, sort of hope to sneak past him. We also, of course, with the opening move, Dalahan moved there. He actually gains a little we uh, VP lead on Stone Killer. Rears and falling back there, Pioneer's engaging, going for the fuel pawn there. Second game before two cents enough, while he's gone for the infantry combat there, he hasn't quite yet used it. Also, a bit of barbed wire there, very common move to see barbed wire there, grabbing the center part. BP there with the pioneers as well, so he's actually going to get quite the lead there on Stone Killer. Second MD42, they're almost done, barring off here as well. Points being grabbed, foot rough squad all the way there for Stone Killer. Fuel secured for the United States of America. Third BP there, so again, I mean, he's going to get a bit of a lead there rather quickly against the Stone Killer. But of course, Stone Killer in this case is actually just rapidly lock it down, but still. That could very quickly become a bit dangerous there for Stone Killer. Meanwhile, for Dullahan, we got there the regular police, but they're on the way. But still, two pioneers, 24 twos, then getting any infantry out there. It's a bit uh, less of a usual start there. Pioneers then getting the parapment. Pioneers down to half health there, two men. More pioneers, but an 4 2 advances up there. Other MD42 holding up here, moving up support. While the rest of the territory is secured, we have go for the victory point there, hold that away there from Dallahan. Ram getting suppressed, taking losses as the MD42 and the Pioneers closes in on them. Point there, grab me going for four riflemen there, four stoned killer. Also noting he might not be quite as likely to go rather coming. Those players tend to go and then fought right away so we can still actually get up early on. Some riflemen there with some veterans on them already, but that is not what Stone Killer is doing, so. Infantry or heavy cavalry does seem more likely. I mean, some players still go for a lot of rifle right off the bat, then sort of switch in towards rifle company, but they tend to be more of a minority. Rifle squad ready for action. As a rule of thumb, there, getting the victory point there. Western victory point secured there by a dollar hand, but the other two are now in the hands of America. Rifle there moving up, and is firing back. We got points there being secured. And we got take up here as well. So one kind of these two pioneers, two MP4s. Now that's a pretty unusual opening there from a Wehrmacht player. But let's see if Dalahan can actually make it swing against his opponent. We got rather attacking for so points there. Scheiße, Dieter. There's the MG. Ah, oh, it's there. Good. We more lots of death. We got more Y here. Knowing by the way, sort of trying to fun his opponent about them, making it harder for him to move freely. Cheeky play there by Dalahan, but could also work out quite effectively. Again, that basically means if he wants to sort of move from here, Yalda has to take from here again. Limiting a bit the area again, it's sort of minimizes where you can move from. It has to go from here, sort of here. So, again, it does mean overall that Stone Killer has to suffer a bit more work there, depending on what the situation is. Rough there, backs against the wall. We've got Gunners moving up behind them there with the wall. We've got Pioneers. Could you wipe there? Could you wipe? No, no, looks like they might just make way. Well, he might make way. Rough there against Rifeman, misses. Bit of waste there, I think, for Dollarham then. Like the Megalize Company has been set up there as well for the Wehrmacht. What else do we have here? Do we have any tech up? No lieutenant, no captain yet here for Stone Killer, no upgrade side. I mean, quick, quick, for example, swing towards a few BARs and sort of niche that. And there we go, we've got choice fine. It is the company command post. Captain is on the way. Interesting to see that, like, means he's going for Stewart and such that versus Dullahan. But at the same time, with only one gun it is squad, a part of me would actually say the lieutenant and a quick M20 are probably much, much better here versus Dullahan. Meanwhile, going there for the fuel point, sneaking in there was some good play there by Stone Killer, harassing and forcing, of course, Dollahan's 
uh, to a certain extent less flexible forces due to the heavier lines then go to so you have to sort of double back on that. So that's actually not bad there by Stone Killer. Almost got the car pump still if we can just hold the fuel pump for as long as possible. That's pretty decent. Meanwhile we got a fresh push there against the fuel pump there. And we got Panzer gonna be there around for Dullahan and the twenty first Panzer to be shown. Rifle sneak about there, do we have the captain almost done? Almost, almost, there's still nothing else there for Stone Killer and the United States. Pani is bringing it into the line of fire of the rear slants there, and they secure the fuel pump, that's going to make things a bit more cool. They're going into the building first, that's going to make it harder. A lot harder actually for the Pani to be slots, and that's going to force Stalahan and Travis to win further forces here to have to deal with the rear slants. Making it even hard for him to actually get the fuel we point in their back. So a strong move there in the centre by Stone Killer again, due to lack of infantry though of course for the Panzer Gunners. That might change it, but well, there goes actually forced not to shift an MD4 to, to, to deal with. In fact another one might actually just cover the flank here and there we go. He's realised of course he might just set himself up from that. But of course he can still do, but it's going to take some time plus of course to get a lot of free shots there at the MD42 crew in the process. Going for the car point there as well, Dalahan is more than eager to return the favor. Got Rapinade to quickly react, and we got a steward on the way. And we actually got Telemines right here, tending right here, build moving in. Dalahan with some very aggressive and sneaky pioneer tactics against Stone Killer. In this case, though, backfired on in the rifle, quick to punish him, and quickly Dieter and Franz fell to the ground. Going there for another point there. Good lord, Stone Killer keeps up that harassment there. MD42 forces switch back, they're perhaps realizing in front is too exposed, perhaps just leaves another panzer and there we go. In this case, he actually able to draw, draw out the rear from then wipe out with his panzer gunners by the looks of it. So right here, Delahan's gambits has slightly worked up, but still there's been a huge loss of fuel there for him. Though he's still not, he's actually still taking up there, so that's pretty bold, he hasn't even gone for a pack forward here. Meanwhile, he got the steward out there for Stone Killer, nothing further there from his base though, he's got a bit of manpower, a bit of minister floating back. Upgrades would be good. Grenades could also work there for smoke screens and the likes, but otherwise, BARs would help there all the German infantry and whatnot. MD42 engaged by the steward, moving up there. M5A1, 37 mm gun, and a few machine guns at front. MD42 there being pushed away as rounds fly all above it. Or roughly it, they failed to match him personally on the rifleman. And ambulance out here. Actually, he rushed out the ambulance with the captain. Now, that's pretty rare. Most people just used to rush a bit out here, but he actually used to rush out other things. And he's using it to even rush an upgrade. That's actually the first time I've seen someone rush the rack locking there with their captain. That's pretty impressive, actually. That allows him to just get out then perhaps equip his men with a lot of browning automatic and then just uh, sort of begin to sort of further on these pressure then Dollahan's actually now been spotted to the steward getting packed for. So he actually used the steward there to go for the car point. Very bold again, need to be careful, I mean one more move here, again could result in you know, either steward being stolen or something else there, but it's bold, it's aggressive, and it's cheeky as hell. But not quite as cheeky there as trying to lay a teleman right there across the butt wire move there. Oh well it looks like he might just be able to cut off there. Dollahan again denying Dollahan further fuel well played there, Panzer is moving in. Going to deal with that. Pack 40 only arriving now. Need to get the crew back in there quickly. Schnip. And there we go. Starting rockets. All his men back there into the still light tank. As Jeremy's bunk will point there. We've got Captain Gaging. The Captain Jones ain't got a problem there as the Panzer has absolutely cut his men apart. MG42 they're advancing. Veterans run already. Also promoting Pam. MG7 incendiary round use there already as well. On top of everything. And before they push back, caught by Rock in a pretty bad position to it. They're just going to need to he sort of follow up there, of course, with the BARs. He does add more of an assault on there, Mr. Stone Killer. Pack 40 arriving, still needs to get out there. Can survive three shots, but that's it. In this case, he does successfully escape. Whoa, that was quite a shot. Right across the map there. Rather than pushed away. Nothing further there from Stone Killer. No choice of doctrine. A capture point is under attack. Using the studio again to get points there, rifle moving ahead there, and now of course freshly equipped with the Browning automatic rifle. The World War One aero weapon, which was greater use in World War Two. It was also by the way used by the Polish army as well. Little fun fact there, though I can't remember what the Polish called it, they gave it some other name. Going for the cutoff on there, so Stone Killers push here for the south has really the salt in the north being a bit more. I mean, also got rifling continue being in there. I do feel that's a bit odd there by Stone Killer. I pack for the time to catch the student history has to sort of shift away. Going for the fuel munitions. Cough on there also helped by Gunadiers. Panzer is advancing. No mines here from Dalahan, or at least not in the immediate vicinity. Tell mines there. Move to Arbite. There you go, Panzer's bring it coming up from rifle. Double BARs by the way on these chaps. 
Same, I believe, with these. Yes, indeed. Quite heavily equipped there. And we go past the gate here for the steward. Taking heavy damage, forced away there. Need to be careful. And we got a pack out here for Stone Killer, a bit of artillery. And next second pack 40 there for Dullahan. In the meanwhile, again, the constant fuel harassment that is not helping up Dullahan and making it much harder for him to get any kind of armor. Raven is suppressed by the MD42 covering up the cutoff point. Need to get that point back there for Stone Killer. Still, they're taking hits. Captain, Raven needs to up there. And we got grenades now on the way here for Stone Killer. Adding further firepower to his men. Also, smoke speed for turning help here. In 10 rounds up point blank, need to retreat, need to retreat! Good lord! Was saved here by the other rifle to kill the gunner, ensuring that the rifle could go within the nick of time. That was damn close there for Stone Killer. He's got the cop on this, so we still hadn't gotten this area connected to that about to have the captain. M2 coming up with a nice bit of shade under the tree. Rifle still inside the building, not reacting what bit, one bit. I has Stone Killer actually forgot about these riflemen. It strikes me as a bit peculiar. I would pack out to bring up this steward. Needs some dire repairs. It's certainly seen best days. There you go, Rafa going after the pack 40, at least one of them. Other pack 40 grabbing the cutoff point again, but soon there he will have to the southern fuel, and soon the other fuel will have got pioneers there. A lot of action, really. MD42, they're turning about. Veteran D2 already. There you go, Rafa. Oh dear, we could see what up there. We will see what up, actually. There you go. First Rafa squad there, lost a stone killer. 11 minutes, 30 seconds. Rather push us like a bit much there. Need to be careful that he's going to get some replacement. He could actually consider some uh, ranges. Bit more expensive, but uh, they do pack the requisite punch. Pack 40 in trouble. Actually, should rush with his capture clear that as quickly as possible. Move further force moving in there. Stuart ready once more for another round against the crowds and pioneers here under your father Jurgens. Trying here to go for the fuel pump up and doing what they can there. Stuart, of course, could swiftly deal with them. There you go. More in rounds here from Dollar. He's using it aggressively against the opponent. Good work there. A lot of Emma players tend to ignore them. Also, of course, we to note him for a lot. To some extent, his MDs are sort of more aggressively positioned or used half the time. Oh, the way, MD4 tank caught by the steward light tank. Guns firing. Misses a bit there, unfortunately. Right, capture there, though. Take five of them to have them in going to discard this. Moving up. Pack 40, falling a bit back. Pack cards are blasting away there. More infantry is needed soon here for Stone Killer. Punch are going to lose, going to lose in a bit of trouble. Betty to the Rockman. The Rockman it goes off there, does a bit of damage. A bit too late, there's a dodge out. Oh well. Actually, he's got there now. They're very low on health, they're very low on health. They go forced to wait. Pack forced to point. Stuart can't thus leave him in support there. Nope. Oh, barely made it, otherwise, that would have been a very harsh loss there for Stone Kill. I don't think he could have easily sort of gone back from that. And meanwhile, Dalahan has finally been able to sort of build up the support core, but he's still a bit behind there in the overall the sort of tech race due to the severe amount of harassment you've seen towards his few points there by Stone Killer. Has really been able to keep up the game there. Pack out to number two on the way. Two pack houses I think is a bit overkill, particularly seeing how the pack houses currently perform. They require a lot more management, they're not quite so much of their setup with just auto fire. So going for two pack characters could prove a bit of a problem. In particular, also when you consider sort of overall Dalahan's playstyle, it's a lot more fluid and aggressive. It's less dependent on, say, heavier static points. I mean, it does get pack out, he still uses MDs, but still. But he also uses MD42s a lot more aggressively, does move about a bit more half the time. So it could backfire on Stone Killer. They actually expend that much manpower into pack characters. I mean, that is still 760 manpower. That could be another rifleman squad. That could be ranges. That could be, you know, fuel cash to help him further gain the tech advantage versus Dalahan. Oh, Telemine went off, clearing out the pack as well. But losing Stone Killer there, he's stewed like tank. That's going to hurt. Old medic bunker here. Interesting position for the medic bunker there. Very interesting position. I don't think I oh, well, it's been some time since someone put the fort there. Usually it's either in combination with a half track, then that was something Barton used to do a long time ago. And, well, either a command bank, which is a bit more common, but still otherwise rather rare. But it's time here for the mid game analysis. Currently, in terms of damage, Stalin's leading ahead, kills, Weiss is also leading ahead. On the other hand, of course, I mean, Important thing to get those army value wise, those stone killers actually cut quite, quite elite. Then, of course, point wise, he's overall kind of much against him, rather with some higher losses here and there. Of course, that's the American player, of course, he's sort of more expensive to have more losses. And again, it's all due partly due to again 
Dallahan is relying more on heavy machine guns. He's not relying so heavily on infantry, and thus to a certain extent he can also mitigate the losses actually suffering that way. Whereas against gun killers, very reliant on infantry, hasn't used smoke much. So in that sense, I mean it's inevitable there's going to be you know a discrepancy there in damage between the two. Plus, of course, the stewards soaks up a lot of damage, but does get knocked out. So in that way, that also racks up damage. So in that sense, I mean. It's not like Dollahan's got a massive lead in most sense, although Victory Point Light is also doing reasonably well there. But certainly, so I think Star Stone Killer's perhaps a bit struck me here with Dollahan's play. So, I mean, we are seeing more Wehrmacht players going for and more machine guns and using quick rushes for Panzer gun it is and the likes. But still, it's not that many yet. So, I'm sure Stone Killer's perhaps a bit unsure how to react to this. Or perhaps he is reacting to this with the double pack couch out of the way, though. I'm not entirely again sure that's a good idea, and that could prove problematic. Again, it is a lot of manpower, which I think would have used elsewhere better. And certainly, taking up right now would probably be the best idea here for Stone Killer. Perhaps throwing down some rangers in the way. Otherwise, he needs to use his pack counters more aggressively. He needs to sort of focus on them. He needs to have them both barraging at the same target whenever necessary. You're know, trying to quickly clear them out as swiftly as possible and deny, you know, Dallahan any use of his weapons. Also, noting he's actually gone for fortified armored doctrine. That's also a bit rare. And of course, Stone Killer then should probably also utilize his uh, rifle defensive structure to lay down some mines here and there, but sadly that never quite came about either. So, a few issues there for Stone Killer. But overall, you should try and get out somehow as quickly as possible, get some ranges to support it, and always, you know, try to sort of hit Dullahan here and there, sort of perhaps try and steal some weapons. MD42s or Pack 40s would be a pretty good choice there for Stone Killer. For Dullahan. I mean, get some armor out would be good. Stuart, maybe Ospent or Panzer for all could work. Some more Panzer gun this would I think be a good choice there for Dullahan versus all those riflemen with assault rifles. Well, not assault rifles, but you know, BARs or battle rifles or whatever you call them. Could be an idea there, but I should keeping up this current set of attacks that I think could work out reasonably well. Though he needs to be more careful now, of course, with more firepower being brought out. He needs to be more careful with the support weapons. I mean, there's a higher chance of basically handing over an MD42 there to Stone Killer. But he's not getting so much out of the company command post. It says he's just rushing out a few things to do it all right. But a part of me thinks he might have done better here with the platoon command post. We'll of course have to see. Back to the fight here. Strange for the enemy 42. Rather risky position. There you go. Pack out of fires. Almost gets it. Retreat. We've got a grenade. Grenade following up there. Oh! Almost! Almost! Lucky bastard. MG42 shifting forward again to cover the pioneers. Again, there's always an MG42 more or less covering in advance half the time. Gaining a storm gets there. And a second steward for Stone Killer. You rarely actually see a player go for more than one steward. Something like you rarely to see a player go for more than one 2 to 2. If they lose it, they never replace it. And a lot of stewards also tend to be that. You know, just get one throw it away. Never bother with it again. So that's pretty interesting. Not necessarily bad, but continuing the overall situation, it feels a bit weird. I'd rather see them try and take up and go for the as quickly as possible. Again, it sort of feels into that those double pack characters. It feels a bit, you know, odd. Fuel crash up here for Dylan to try and make up for some of the fuel losses he suffered. Good work there. Bunker up. MD42 pack 40 bouncing. Stuke almost done. Stuke 3 ready to deploy. Also noting pack cards aren't exactly on buying the same target, thus he's actually losing up a bit there some of some firepower concentration. Panzer gun it is, supporting the gun it is, and go to right from holding up the lots of BS capture they're covering as well the area. Second steward moving up here for Stone Killer. Roughing up there, clutching pineapple grenades, and there you go, locking them through there. God in Himmel, they got fans and Fritz, Scheiße. Fortune can just pass away there halfway to Vets and the Fleet. Stormke shoots moves up, getting him pinned up machine gun, they're only order to shoot at vehicles, which rather negates the MP42 to a certain extent. Shoots out the captain, needs to be careful there for the world captain about that. If you witness it, we got down to the stool. On fleet to fire machine and give air there. There we go, shoots away. At the advancing rap normal's got the MP42 there, but looks like he escapes, looks like he escapes. Ram there taking losses to the mighty Stormke shoots, getting shot by the main gun or the machine gun. Or even crushed. Rather here on the wrong side of the Samax, I think he's used there this doctrine, good use there, actually now some Samax, very to see there, some advantage. Going after that student again, here we note that there's another bit of issue there for uh, Stone Killer, he's actually lacking anti tank weapons at the moment. He's only got the captain again, that's, that's also probably where the pack cards have filled out, there's no anti tank guns at all. 
I mean, he must have been feeling rather confident that Stalahan wouldn't be getting fooled at all for any armor, but he's obviously been proven wrong there. And still, he's only relying on the bazookas and the steward. I mean, he could throw in some bazookas if he wants to, but question, of course, his men have room for it. He's still not taking up here. Meanwhile, every country going in there from Dalhan trying to get a here idea of the battlefield. Where the steward receives the most vital repairs. That guards there looks like they are actually bombarding the same target. Sadly, that target has already left the zone, it seems. Our way slowly pushing back his opponent again, going for the victory point. Panzer gonna end for turning up here. Panzer gonna deal. Actually, halfway to veterans, if he ain't done pretty well too here for Dullahan. More though would do better. Gonna be advancing in the fight for Caps and Rifleman, PARs and Thompsons. And one go rounds. There you go. Actually, on the wrong side of the cover there, they're only next to the Captain Jones. And there we almost got the right from this wipe. Almost. Oh! Makes it. Bloody well makes it. Up north, Panzer's riding straight at the Rifleman. Ah! And they win. They bloody hell barely win. The Rifleman went in pretty poor condition. I guess the pan run they gone off there. And then they just sort of follow in there. That was close as hell. I mean, for Dullahan, that would have been huge if he lost it, but still huge if he won there. So, crikey. That was a pretty rare move. Following up with more Panzer than it is here for the 21st Panzer. It's your right from me in here. Reaching through the centre. They're going for just coming up. His two glass. We had the captain's two bombs down. Needs to retreat. Pop smoke. Pop smoke. Nibun. Schnell. What? Nibun. Let me find a bit of trouble here. Pack out is flying right there. Incendiary rounds. Veteran D317 kills. Dullahan makes use of every ability he has. Under his command, there as much as possible. For well, the pack out, they're trying to keep up the advance, trying to deal with anything here, but they're just struggling to sort of keep it up there. Stuart's heading out again, still no further take up. Looks like at this point, he's actually just setting up here for the Pershing. Needs to get more rifle, needs to equip the BRs. We need to get Rangers. Just get out some troops, says Stone Killer. Honestly, I think he would have done good with some Rangers early on. Oh, they're still moving in there. Captain going out, going to cut the fuel cache, but also cut the bunker. There we go. Finally getting up some Rangers there from a nearby Ranger battalion. Bring them some Thompsons to lead the way. The enemy is taking our territory. Watch there secured, going for the cutoff point, denying Dusty Dullahan more fuel. By this point, it's a bit less uh, of a potent move. So now he actually has stuck up so a bit before there. Partly thanks to a truly good decision of going for fuel cash. Their Panzer's moving in there, Betsy Free Rock needs to go away. Or, oh, popping a grenade right there! Panzer is moving in! Oh! Nice! Dalaham wasn't paying attention. Eventually, the three Panzer Grenadiers were annihilated within a matter of moments. Huge loss there for Dalahan, and certainly a bit of vengeance there for Stone Killer. Rangers there moving in, Rabbin. Need to retreat, need to retreat. Careful, careful, careful. Stuke setting out there. Close to Veterans he one shot fired, missed. Rangers going towards the west or east, and the MD4 towards Rangers to sort of halt it. He never seems to expect that MD42 whenever it's there. Switching over to incendiary rounds, he still continues onward, but there you go, punishing damage being inflicted. Quick cook grenade, but is it enough? No, it's not. Need to retreat the Rangers. Pack 40 covering here, so the still can't do much. He's close to the range, calling the Pershing, just a matter of moments. Stuke sets up, but not for repair. They're careful, Dalahan, careful. We must push up here, gonna this MD42 pack out of there, slightly shifting back. Oswald Noy Stuke there, knocked up the pack 40. More rifle on the way there, pack out is just aren't getting much done there again. At the moment, they do quite a bit more management, and Stone Killer just can't quite get that to fit with his current playstyle, so again, I don't think he should have gone for them. Ready for and again, a part of me wonder if he wouldn't have done better with the lieutenant, perhaps with 50 calibers. I mean, that certainly seems more effective again this kind of place there, the Dolan 2 utilizing in the M20 to so the half packs. Oh, wait, MG42 taking him larger. There you go, pack out, actually doing some serious damage as they're both focusing down. Or at least one of them is. Stu moving up there, flanking the pack out. So Panther was joining in there. Veterans who won three kills. Almost got it, MG3 and MG42 forced to fall away there. Just moments away from the Pershing, Stuke sets in there, pack out to clear it out. Five kills for the Sturm, gets shoots Rifleman, Rangers moving in there, Panther's opening up there. Rangers need to focus him down, alongside the Rifleman. Step moves out in the open, takes further hits up close to Stuke and the Panther on the Osman moving up there, Flak Panther arriving. He's 
got no anti tank gun, no nothing here really. Again, there's clearly a bit of a lag there. Plus, the captain has been utterly annihilated. Black Phantom moving ahead here. Black flying back. They need to go away. Need to get away. Stoop being repaired rapidly. Well, the Black Panther is about to wrecking the pack. How to Black moving ahead? There we got Pershing around now here for Stoned Killer. And Telemines again being attempted here by Dollahan. On the cutoff point there, another Telemine. Pershing rolls out there with its 19mm gun. There was, of course, also the Super Pershing, which I think was basically some crews upgrading a Pershing there with a bigger gun and slamming on more armor. Though we didn't actually see much combat. Black Pan taking a hit there. Screw goes up there. Doesn't have enough munition for target weak point. Oh, there we go, there we go. Ah, oh, he used munition on something else. He saved smoke there. Eh? He probably been off using target weak point. Instead, he's down to Pershing. He's stupid there to save the Oscar. Awesome. He probably could have saved both. Even we got nothing else nearby support there. Pershing doing, doing good damage. Pack Potter then moving in there. Pershing needs to fall back. Quickly, guys. There we go, Stoop wrecked. Tragic loss there for Germany. Pershing pulls back there, but it's going to need a lot of repairs. And the problem is, right now, he's got nothing to repair it. Come on, hang out here for Dunahan. Right from the firing end there, flat pack we got in before two there, creeping about alongside the pack 40. Got the Kamar tank moving forwards. Riesel's on the way, flat pack moving in there. Pack out blasting away there. Damage engine, ranges, rather moving up the quick east press for 30 flim for again, incendiary rounds, just on the ball with it every single time there. Really just admirable and really something I wish a lot more Bama players would catch on to. And we he's hulling down the flag panzer. We're actually seeing someone hull down something. I haven't seen that in some time. Remember I'm thinking it murder again by another out of incendiary rounds plus the command chain there the feared panzer annihilating the rifleman stone killer hit he's definitely getting killed the enemy is down to 75 <coughs> points stone killer not looking very good at the moment he's getting several reasons there to help repair the pershing <coughs> his infantry is not looking good he's still got the two pack howitzers he's definitely struggling to get the most out of them at the moment Again, the play style that Dalan is playing limits sort of, you know, the full effects of the other pack out to some extent. I, of course, never really focused them sort of about the match, so you just try to figure out where's best to shoot them. You might more air recons there from Dalahan, always keeping there. Quick glance at the battlefield, ensuring he's got some idea there what's happening. And what we caught badly off guard, they're going to do this almost like here by the Persings, 90mm shell. Pack out is moving up. We need to clear out the pack out, uh, pack force there. Could allow the person to deal with the rest of the flat pants on the command tank. The question is, if we can't, he's pretty much well screwed. Getting more repairs done there on the Pershing. Command tank is up. We need to get out there before the white pack out is firing. We are losing the sector. We need to get out of the building, men. Quickly. Oh, chose the wrong door. No. Dear. Damage engine. He's actually, I think, bombarding the Austin with the pack houses. And for that to work, they need to be virtually to be rather better off looking for pack 40 or like that. Smoke's been down though from the command tank allows them to punch the front. There we go, virtually to run away. But oh no, oh no, oh no, exposed in the rear, exposed in the rear. And bleeding out of victory points. And GG game over. A bit of a swifter match for us. We're having a hard time finding anything good, so it just sort of went with this one since we thought it had some good points and some interesting play here. And again, you know, pack cows dog might have worked before they were nerfed, but now you have to be more careful with them. So again, it more depends on your opponent's playstyle. The less of you know, sort every up, sort out every problem you got, sort of artillery now. And the problem is, I think Stone Killer was basically still using them like that. 
And that rather meant, you know, that was a lot of manpower taken away from otherwise we could have countered Dullahan's force much better. Again, anti-tank guns would have helped notably a lot there. Again, he was basically relying on the bazooka guys until he could get this Pershing out. Now, that's a pretty risky strategy overall. And a part of me thinks again, while it was nice to see him sort of go for these things, he's, I think he would have been better for the lieutenant and some stuff from there, then going for this, some armor, and then getting the Pershing out, maybe going for the fuel cache underway. Instead, it just... He ended up with a sort of weird strategy, which... Really wasn't good there versus Dallahans at all against sort of, you know, the rapid rush strategy. Though, again, he did a really good job there harassing and denying fuel. But the problem is he rather threw it away there with the double pack houses. I mean, double pack houses is not a really a rip, rapid, swift, aggressive play. And it rather went against the grain of the rest of his strategy there. So, basically, the double pack houses that killed Stone Killer. Had he maybe played against a different opponent, had he played differently again, it could have worked. But promise it didn't fit in at all. He did better with the Trinity, which is... Overall, a lot of more aggressive and a lot swifter overall, and then so of course maybe throwing in some bazookas to cover up against any vehicles that way. So there was definitely some problems there from Stone Killer's play. Dallahan, of course, a bit risky play as well, did his best, but again was able to take advantage of Stone Killer's mistakes. Also interesting use there for hold down and some other bits there. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. I hope it gave you additional matches. If it did, why not subscribe to a friend, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in me player and find some feedback in the comment section. And this is Imperial Lynching. Cheers, thank you for watching, and hope to see you all over the time. Bye.